Good morning, everybody. My name is Filippo Favilli. I'm a naturalist and a geographer, and I work for Eurac Research in Bolzano, Italy. It's a great honor and a pleasure for me to be here to introduce this event, this um, wonderful uh, uh, movie about uh, the, the survival stories of, of the Alps. And to be, to be invited to talk in general about biodiversity and conservation works in the Alps. So I decided to talk about uh, this biodiversity and conservation, uh, posing a question, how can we move from the survival of species to a coexistence? So as soon as I saw the, um, the trailer, I asked myself, how can we really help the, the survival of this uh, wildlife species? In, in the work that we do in our everyday life, but also including our, so nature is not uh, disconnected from humans. And so we need to help these species to, to survive, but also ourselves. Looking at the Alpine biodiversity, uh, we know that the Alps are one of the regions with the richest flora and fauna in Europe, which is second only to the Mediterranean basin. And this is the results, not only of the natural conditions, but also of the human activities over the course of centuries. So na the nature, the wildlife and humans have always been together in shaping the Alpine biodiversity. We know that the Alps host more than 30,000 species of, of, uh, of animals and uh, more than 4,000 species of vascular plants. And if we look at the at, at analysis of the trends of biodiversity in the last decades, we can see that some taxonomic groups actually have, an, have, a, uh, are, have increased in their richness or in their diversity or turnover while others are in a, a bit of difficulties in their uh, abundance. But then let's give a look at some charismatic species like the wolf, the bear, and the alpine ibex. As we can see from, this, uh, from, from these maps, all these species are actually increasing in their uh, population size and also in the territories that they uh, are, are living in. They are returning to some uh, ter uh, territories where they used to live and actually they are increasing their space of, of life. But apart from that, there are many threats on the alpine biodiversity, going from uh, urbanization and habitat fragmentation, the increase of traffic, the increase of tourism, especially mass tourism, uh, climate change, and the use of uh, pesticide in agriculture. These are just something that still uh, harm the biodiversity of, of the Alps. We can see that the protected areas in the Alps are really a lot and of different kinds, and they almost the 30% of the Alpine Convention territory. So they are, they're actually doing a very good job in uh, protecting biodiversity. Is their mission really to do that? But as we can see from this map, they look a little bit isolated one another. They cover a lot of territory, but in many cases they are not actually connected uh, between them. And we know that nature to be alive and to be in good health and to provide the uh, ecosystem services we, we need, needs to be connected to, uh, to have this ecological continuum in order to make the natural uh, processes going, going well. And if we can see from these other maps, Alps have actually many wildlife corridors, ecological corridors, to uh, have this ecological uh, continuum within, but there are also many barriers that impede the natural processes to move also outside of the Alps. So the Alps look like an island of biodiversity uh, sur uh, surrounded by a lot of industrial zones and big cities, as uh, for, for example, in, in Italy or the Padania, plain is, uh, is full of big cities and industrial areas that actually do not help the connectivity of the Alps. Uh, what, what we can see in this picture, this is SACA as are so-called strategic alpine connectivity areas, and they are divided in three types. The first is the where, where actually connectivity works. 
is where we do something to improve the ecological connectivity of that place and the red ones, the barriers, so the zones where actually there is no connectivity. So ecology is, is a way to help biodiversity to flourish and for uh, animals, wildlife to move freely in their environment to connect with other uh, members of their species and with other species. So ecological connectivity looks for the solutions to some problems like, uh, like habitat fragmentation and the uh, separation of, of habitats due to, for example, big roads. How do we work in connectivity? We work mainly with GIS maps. So we project on uh, on 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 the screen the the, the, the situation of a certain uh, area. Study the different kinds of uh, landscape existing or the different land use. We use maps. Then we go in the field. We talk with with the people, and then we find feasible solutions. As you can see down here, this is a building of a green bridge, for if, for example. There are been done in the Alps. You can see here these are some say the, the big ones. And uh, we started from the Alps uh, with Econet, Green Alps, and Albionet to, to see how the situation in the Alps actually is. And then we moved also outside with the Alps Carpathian Corridor, which is a project aimed at connecting the Alps with the Carpathians in order to establish and to maintain this ecological continuum. Then also we worked in the Carpathians a lot to uh, the ecological connectivity of that mountain. In many cases, when we deal with, with people, we deal with, with conflicts. So there are many conflicts going on between humans and wildlife, where actually are always humans being in conflict. And wildlife species are real antagonists, but do the wildlife species think this about us? Not really, are always human in conflict. But human wildlife in an area since many years, like the wolf, or economic conflicts, because the return of the wolf in this case had some impact on the economy of certain areas, and also environmental conflicts due, for example, to the impact of tourism in some uh, um, protected areas or in remote areas. So human wildlife conflicts have an impact on connectivity because even in some areas, some the ecology, let's say it's good for promoting connectivity. If from the social point of view, there is no connection, no projects, no activities uh, will go in the in the in the good way. Will uh, will finalize. And so we have to explore the. the this part to, to see the connectivity as a social issue, as an economic issue. We have to involve people and to listen to their uh, opinions and to their problems. Because otherwise, we risk things like this that people make a self revenge on a species that cannot control or that cannot be controlled. And this is a terrible thing we have to fight. Okay, just to say that the natural conservation projects, uh, and I will talk briefly just about two of them, Life Wolf Alps EU and Livestock Protect, the aims at uh, protecting biodiversity, wildlife, wild places or endangered species, and to promote their announcement. But to, as we can see, conservation activities often go in conflict with human activities. And so conservation needs to go to, together with the local uh, development and uh, promoting conservation of wildlife and human activities, the connection between and among people, the support to people who actually are, are engaged in a, in a change in their habits, in their way of, of living due to, for example, the presence of the wolf or of the bear, and the education of the new generations. We do this with workshops, with meeting on site, with movies, with uh, comics, uh, with uh, questionnaires, with interviews. There are many ways according to the place and to the people to get the uh, necessary informations. We go on site, we see how the situation is, how is the place, because each situation is unique. We test materials uh, in the ground to see, to check which is the best way to protect, for example, uh, sheep's flocks from the attacks of the of the wolf. 
then also we promote the education and the economy so the wildlife tourism can go together with conservation or the promotion of local products uh, done in areas where conservation activities are ongoing these are all a situation that can bring a win-win situation in the end so just to finalize there is not a general model for human and wildlife coexistence but uh, every time we work on it we know that we are promoting the uh, protection of biodiversity and the uh, protection of the human activities wildlife species are beautiful because they are unpredictable and uncontrollable and in many cases we we this is unacceptable for many people who wants to control everything but the beauty of nature is also this it's the fact that it's not under our control and when we talk with with people when we promote activities for bio for biodiversity conservation the promotion of resilience is much more productive than imposing a truth of, of a part. So we need to know how to be resilient, how to change to some external factors having benefits out, out of it. So I just close you here. Sorry if I took uh, maybe a bit more of time, but just remember that future of wild species really depends on us, on human attitude, emotional responses and behavior as it does on wildlife ecology. Thank you very much and enjoy the movie. Goodbye.